so here we are, 7.5. This is our first video, so A is an alpha. And the name of this section is Graphing Parabolas. And um, in, golly, I think it was chapter 3, we talked about parabolas just a little bit. They are pictures that either do this or they do this. Okay? They never do this or this. Those are hyperbolas. So these uh, that we're doing are parabolas, so they either have a high point or they have a low point. And that, those high points or the low points are called vertices or a vertex. And we'll get into all of that shortly. <clears throat> but first of all, you know, when we're doing linear equations, um, we'd have something like 3x plus 4y equals 12. And because neither one of the variables had an exponent other than 1, it gave us a picture of a straight line. Once we put a number on, a, on the x variable there like that, it changes everything to a non-straight line or what is called non-linear. And when we have a 2 up there on the x, it makes the parabola, which is what we're going to look at right now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to graph a parabola given an equation. So when we're given an equation um, such as y equals x squared minus 3, we can make a table and we can just plug a number in for x and it'll spit out a y. So if we plug in a negative 3 here for x, it gives us a y value of 6. If we plug in a negative 2, it gives me a y value of 1. And we just keep going until we just have a bunch of points because sometimes we need a whole bunch of points to find out what this parabola is doing. So, for example, if we were just to graph those points there, negative 3, 6, negative 2, 1, negative 1, negative 2, in 0, negative 3, that doesn't really tell us what the parabola is doing. Because remember, the parabola does that or it does that. And at this point, we're just given this bit of information right here. So then we have to start graphing the other side of the y-axis and put in 1, and it gives me negative 2, a 2, and it gives me a 1, a 3, and it gives me a 6. So then I start getting the other, whoops, 2, 1, that one, that dot there before. Oh, let's just get rid of it. And then 3, 6. <clears throat> so then that gives me another part of the parabola. But when you're just looking at a long equation and you start making a table, you don't know where this parabola is going to turn around and go the other direction. So therefore, you know, I had to graph seven points in order to just find out kind of an idea of what this parabola looks like. Sometimes you have to graph more because if you chose all the points over here on the side, you'd never find out what it does over here. So therefore, we're going to try to come up with, well, we are going to come up with, another method in order to solve this. So I'm going to leave that picture of the parabola there because I do want you to be familiar with just a couple things that, if you know, it will help you get an idea of whether you're doing this right or not. Okay, so first thing is there's always going to be a low point and a high point. It's not always going to be on this y-axis. It may be um, over here. Okay, so it's not always on this y-axis here. Uh, but we do know a couple things. We know that it's going to cross the x-axis at two points or one point, because the vertex happens to just touch it, or not at all. Okay, so crossing the x-axis, we have a choice of zero times, one time if it's the vertex, or two times if it goes through and the vertex is below or in some cases above. So it's crossed there and it's crossed there. So those are your choices of it crossing the x-axis. Now the y-axis, it will if 
it will only cross the y-axis at one point. Um, it will always cross the y-axis. Sometimes, you know, you may get a hyperbola or a parabola that's clear over here, and it may be a long, long way up the y value. It may be 10 billion before it crosses the y-axis, but it will always cross that y-axis. All right, so let's get rid of some of the stuff I have up here and get back to my one parabola. All right, so um, what else do I want to tell you about this? When we have an equation in y equals a number, we'll call it a, I know a number a, right? A b, which is just a number, and a c, which is a number. If I have an equation in that form, it will always give me a parabola. Sometimes the parabola opens up, sometimes the parabola opens down. But a couple things that are really, really important as you're looking at these. When it's written in this form right here, the last number, the number here without a variable, you know, we call the x, are, x and y are variables, the a, b, and c are, they represent numbers. But if I were, well, let me go ahead and write this as an equation with numbers in it. And we'll look at this one a little bit better later. This number and its sign will always be where this graph crosses the y-axis. So if this is a 5 here, that means it's going to cross the y-axis right there. I don't know if it's going to be this way or this way or this way. I don't know what it's going to do. But I do know that there is going to be a point right here at 5 where it will cross. So that's one of my points. Okay, let's keep going. So that is one simple way to find a point of the parabola. doesn't take um, much thought to do that. We also know that the vertex, which again, remember I told you, the vertex is either the lowest spot or the highest spot. It's where it changes direction. Okay, I'm going to erase this one. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and, well, let's leave that one there, that equation there. The x value, um, where it turns here or, you know, here, the high point or the low point, the x value of that, knowing how far to go this way or this way, is going to be negative b over 2a. That is the formula to find out how far left or right of the y-axis that vertex is going to be. <clears throat> All right. I'm not going to go through the math. If you want to see the math and how they got that as a formula, bottom of page 614. But uh, most students either don't care or are confused by it. So I just give you the formula and we'll go from there. So if we use this as our equation, my x is going to be negative. And what is my b? My b is right here. It is negative 6. So negative, that negative 6, negative b over 2 times whatever a is. What number does a represent here? A 1. So that gives me 6 over 2, which equals 3. So somewhere along this line, and that's got a name, but we'll get into the name later. No sense in learning that at this point when we're just trying to figure out what to do. So we know that the, the parabola is going to either go this way or this way, somewhere along this line here. <clears throat> we're not sure where, but it's going to go open up or open down somewhere along there. So that's a little bit more information than uh, we had prior to. So we'll erase that. So that's my x value. Now let's say that uh, <clears throat> I want to find out where it does make that turn. All I have to do is take that 3 that I got. Let me write that down here. My 3. All I have to do is take that and put it in here for x. So if I do 3 squared, 
minus 6 times 3. So I'm just putting it in the original equation. 9 minus 18 plus 5 equals negative 4. So at 3, 3, and then down 4, that is going to be the high or the low point. That's going to be the turning point or what we call the vertex. And I'll put that in blue just so I remember it. So I know that. And what else did I know? I knew that it, it went through the y value at 5. So I'm going to put that up here. I also know, all right, so now I know that it is going to look somewhat like this, right? And it does the exact same thing on the other side of this red line here. I'm just going to tell you what the name of this line is. It's called an asymptote. Spelled really weird. So I can at least call it the asymptote as we're, as we're doing this. I know, a really weird word. So <clears throat> that line, that vertex um, that goes up and down is the asymptote. All right, so what do I know? I know this point, and I know this point. I also know that this parabola reflects across the asymptote. So if this is 1, 2, 3 over to the left, it's also going to be 1, 2, 3 over here. So that gives me yet another point. The book doesn't teach that at this point, but I'm going to help you out with that. All right. So what else do we want to know? We want to know where it crosses the x-axis. We want to know where it, where the, um, vertex is and where it crosses the y. We have not figured out where it crosses the x-axis. I've just kind of drawn that just to kind of give you an idea of uh, what that looks like. So let's get rid of, if I can, I'm going to get rid of that blue parabola right now and let's pretend that we don't know where it crosses the x-axis because we don't have a distinct point yet. Now I'm going to put uh, that other point up here. One, two, three, one, two, three. So I've got a point there. So I don't know where it crosses the x-axis. So that's going to be my next plan, is finding out where it does that. So let's get rid of all of, whoops, let's get rid of all of this. And I'm just, I'm going to write the whole equation over again. I'm going to pause this. Okay, so in order to find out where it crosses over here and where it crosses over here, all I do is instead of a y here, I'm going to put a 0. So I'm going to flip this around. I'm going to make this x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals y. I like having the y on the right. And we're going to change that y. We're just going to change it to a 0. Once I change it to a 0, I can solve for x. So, remember, factoring, that was a while back. We've got an x and an x. And we have, let's see, two numbers multiplied together give us 5, but added give us negative 6. So, 5 plus 1 gives us positive 6. So, if I put those as negatives, negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. Negative 5 plus negative 1 is this negative 6. So, therefore, my x values are 5 and 1. So now I count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1. And notice here, the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here. So that's one way of checking to make sure you're good to go. Now I can connect the dots and get an idea of what my parabola looks like. <clears throat> All right. So, how many points did I have to find? I had to find five points. But, this one is pretty easy because I just take that number and that's where it is on the y. Um, to find the asymptote, remember it was negative b over 2a. And then I took that answer and plugged it in for x here and that gave me the y value. So, that gave me a distinct point here instead of just this line. It told me where on the line my vertex was. Another thing I'm going to tell you that the book I think gets into later is the sign on this A. If this A is positive, 
the parabola looks like that. It's called concave up. One of the ways students remember is if this is positive, then this parabola could hold water if you put in there. If this A is negative, the parabola would look like this, and it would not hold water, okay? So that's one of the ways some students remember um, whether it is concave up or concave down is dependent on whether this letter right here, A, is a positive or negative, or that number is a positive or negative, which means let's go ahead and in the next video do example two. And you'll notice that the videos will go faster now, now that I've explained some things, and hopefully we'll just have two videos here.